Hello everybody, welcome to another weekly market review session. Okay, so I'm going to take you what's happening or what's been happening the past week and what we need to look out for for the upcoming week for ourselves. Okay, so number one, again as usual, disclaimer, this is not financial advice and any opinions or references that we may make out is our own personal views and not necessarily the views held by any other group. Okay, so what's happened this week? Uh, Oracle of Omaha. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, that is a, a Warren Buffett's nickname, right? The Oracle of Omaha. He wrote in Berkshire Hathaway's annual letter that stock buybacks are beneficial to all shareholders. Okay, and basically, again, he was talking about how some individuals mentioned that share buybacks or share repurchases uh, are harmful to shareholders, right? And he was mentioning that individuals who say this are not economically savvy right or they are again very clueless when they mention such statements okay so again he was talking about the benefits of uh, share buybacks and he said Berkshire has always supported this they have initiated their own buyback program since 2011 and if you are an investor in the stock you would have seen that in the recent years or again for the past 10 years Berkshire Hathaway stock has done relatively well for itself okay uh, now other companies that have done heavy share buybacks are one such as apple right apple bought back a lot of their shares all your big tech firms have also participated in share buybacks companies like meta as well as google and microsoft as well okay so these guys have also participated in share buybacks and it has benefited shareholders uh, incredibly as well okay so again like Buffett says, when the share count goes down, your interest in our many businesses goes up as well, right? So again, uh, it should be emphasized that this benefits all owners. So again, in my opinion, yeah, I agree with this. Share buybacks actually do, uh, do benefit shareholders in the long term, okay? In the long term, share buybacks are always a good thing to look out for in fundamentally good companies, all right? So uh, I just thought it was pretty interesting when he mentioned this and I can resonate with it as an investor myself, I do believe that share buybacks are beneficial and can mean a lot of good things for an individual stock, right? But again, share buybacks need to happen under the right circumstance, okay? If it happens under the wrong circumstances and the company isn't fundamentally good, then it may not be the best thing for itself. So again, uh, you would have to make sure that it is a sound stock and company before you actually uh, take this to heat. Okay, so that's what uh, Warren Buffett said this week. Now, next, Facebook parent company, right? So Meta said it will create a new group that will focus on artificial intelligence, right? Or generative artificial intelligence. And I think this is incredible because, again, with the sudden rise of chat GPT, which is an AI-powered chatbot, right? An open-source AI-powered chatbot. Uh, it has really paved ways, right? And I think we are starting to see how artificial intelligence is going to be very beneficial for not only consumers, but in terms of businesses for the future as well, okay? So again, Meta is the latest in the big tech giants to actually get into the AI craze and AI hype, okay? So Microsoft, again, uh, bought over OpenAI, which is now powering ChatGPT, and Google have also come up with their own BART, product which is their form of AI for itself so Meta will be also focusing on this and not only that Meta also in the earlier days also announced that it will also develop its large language model all right LLAMA and very simply what this language model will allow is scientists and engineers all right professionals in the research sector to actually be able to generate their reports or help with any of their studies as well, right? So this is going to be very beneficial for individuals in that field. And I think this is just the beginning of what AI can bring to the future. So very interesting how this sector is slowly shaping up. Again, it could be a possible growth sector that individuals will start to look at in the future when it comes to uh, investments or businesses or everyday life, right? So pretty interesting what's going on in this sector right now. Uh, okay, so the next one, Okay, so in our high interest rate environments, it's no surprise that I'm seeing this as well. But in just about a month, mortgage, rate, mortgage rates have risen half a percentage point. And because of that, all right, basically what does that mean? Your home loans and your mortgage loans are 
a lot more expensive, right? The interest is high on those. So because of that, the demand for house loans has actually come down to a 28-year low. And the amount of individuals, right, who are applying to purchase a home or your mortgage applications have dropped 6% week over week. Okay, Demand is down about 44% compared to the same period we were in last year. Okay, So again, in this high interest rate environment, I'm not surprised because your home loans are, again, a lot more expensive now. People don't want to pay the high interest, so demand for home or home loans are going to be low. And this is going to be expected for a while because Federal Reserve have already said that terminal rates, what they will increase rates to is 5 to 5.25%. So again, while we're in this environment, your loans and your interest on this are going to be high as well. Okay, so no surprise here on that front. Lastly, Salesforce, right? So Salesforce surprised investors and everybody in the market uh, when they searched around 15%. So after markets, when they announced their, their earnings, all right, it did spike about 15%. I'll show you later on in the charts, okay? But again, the reason for this is that Salesforce has actually cut 10% of its workforce. Again, not surprising. We have seen so many companies cutting out their workforce and restructuring their plan for the future. A lot of the hiring that they did during the COVID period has been stopped. They are cutting their workforce, restructuring, and trying to control spending for themselves. Okay, So companies are really looking at their financials and planning carefully for the near future ahead. Okay, so again, uh, they even disbanded their board committee on mergers and acquisitions. Okay, and are currently reviewing Salesforce business on how to improve and optimize for here in the near future. So, pretty incredible for Salesforce. All right, so with that, let's check out the charts and see how we are doing for the upcoming week. All right. Okay. So we're looking at the charts right now. Okay. My SPY, S&P 500. And very simply, what we can see over here is this. Uh, again, in the past couple of days, prices actually went down. You can see it touched my 392 level where I had drawn earlier on for myself. Okay. Where I had drawn earlier for myself. And as of Friday, we had a massive move up right thursday and friday had a massive move up for ourselves so where do i think we can go in the current week well if we continue upwards and bullishness i am expecting us to at least test around 406 here okay and if let's say we do go a bit further for ourselves then maybe all the way to about 410 right so i'm going to add this here around 410 to ourselves Okay, that's where I see us going. Now, if let's say we don't hold this point and we break here, again, this will be a crucial point, 400 being a round number as well. If let's say we break here, then we can possibly see 396 and all the way to 392 for ourselves. All right? So this is the range that we are possibly looking at for the upcoming week. Now, in terms of my indicators, so let me see as well for myself. All right, so in terms of momentum-wise, we may see, again, some bullishness. It really depends on how the market goes. We've got some uh, high-impact events and news coming out this week. But if there is some bullishness, all right, so my RSI, you can see, is starting to turn upwards. Bearish momentum is starting to get lesser and decreasing. If we do have some movement upwards, then we can test 406 and even 410. But if not, and the news brings us negative volatility and momentum, then possibly all the way to 396 and even 392. Okay, so the 400 level over here is going to be key, all right? Uh, if this is broken, then we will see downside to 396 and 392. If not, then 406 and 410. For the QQQ for ourselves, NASDAQ 100, again, we saw some bullishness on Thursday and Friday for ourselves. Okay, prices push up. Now we are at our, my 300 level. This 300 level is going to be critical. If we break this, we may see a $10 upside and move to my 310 price level. Okay, and again, my momentum, uh, you see bearish momentum slowly decreasing, slowly turning the other way. So again, all rest on our high impact events and use. That is going to be the determining factor for ourselves. If not, 
then prices can possibly come down all the way to my 290, maybe even to 288, right? So 288 to 290, about a $10 move down, okay? So again, for QQ, the 300 price level is one I'm going to be watching out for this week, okay? Now, in terms of CRM, okay, so you can see for CRM, after its earnings for itself, releasing more than what analysts expected close to two times we see a gap up and then after that, in the coming days we see it starting to drop a bit from that gap up okay so pretty impressive for what has been said and done with crm okay massive gap up if you were trading on this lots of returns you could have made from this okay so that's in terms of the charts and where we can go in the coming week so let us now go and take a look at the high impact events and news that can possibly shake up the markets this week. Okay, so what do we look out for in the upcoming week? Well, very simply again, uh, on Tuesday, all right, Federal or the Chairman of the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell, will be issuing a statement. He'll be testifying and basically talking about the monetary policy and where it is at, any changes, and he'll be issuing a statement. So this is going to be happening in two segments, guys. Number one, on Tuesday, he will be releasing his statement, okay? And then on the next event, which is on Wednesday, you can see over here on Wednesday, he will be speaking again, but this time it will be a Q&A session, right? So Q&A session for individuals to ask or members or politicians to actually ask questions regarding the statement that he has made, okay? So depending on how he answers those questions as well and the statement he puts out, it may cause some volatility in the markets, all right? So that's number one. Now, number two, okay, number two for ourselves is that we also have a non-farm employment change that is coming out, all right? Non-farm employment change at 9.15, and very simply, this is going to be looking at employment growth. Okay, so job creation, how many jobs were created is always an important sign of economic growth and strength. Okay, so again, if numbers are not great for this, we may see some volatility. And simultaneously as well, your job openings. Okay, so your job openings and non-farm employment chain, these are going to be happening back to back. So some volatility to be expected. Okay, so that's on Tuesday, Wednesday. And again, all right, on Friday, okay, on Friday, we have unemployment rate that's coming out and average hourly earnings. Okay, so again, with earnings, because of the high inflation environment, we want earnings to be growing with inflation or at least being in line with it. If it's drastically low or not in line, this can cause volatility in the markets. Second thing is unemployment rate. If these numbers are not good as well, then it may cause some shakeup in the markets. So overall, guys, this week, I'll be very, very cautious in my trading. Uh, again, if there are no trades or I'm not certain of the direction, I'll be not taking any trades. It's going to be a tricky week to trade and it's normal. Some weeks are like that. So again, be very, very cautious approaching this week. Uh, if you can find good trades, please enter and exit them quickly, all right? Uh, if not, and you're struggling to find because of the volatility, then it's okay to sit this week out and just observe the markets. Okay, so not an easy week to trade. So just be cautious for yourself. Okay, but again, guys, despite all this volatility and what's happening in the markets, uh, our community here, our TWC community, our 1K a day club is doing incredibly well for themselves. The community members are staying consistent and profitable despite these times of volatility, okay? So let me show you guys how they are doing. Literally, this is for the past week. Again, all right, there are trades that they have done, literally making good returns for themselves in a short period of time, right? Literally, you're talking about seven minutes, okay, guys? Five minutes, eight minutes, 30 minutes, and they are coming away with good returns for themselves. Okay, so again, seven minutes making about 4% for himself, 6% in 30 minutes, 8% in 8 minutes, 
okay, 9% in five minutes. These are all small plays or those with smaller accounts for themselves. Okay, they're making some good returns. These smaller accounts even making 10% in literally 15 minutes for themselves. Okay, and it doesn't end there, guys. All right, you have some of them 23 minutes making about, whoops, all right, making about 3% for themselves, 6%, $160 for themselves, $150 for themselves. Again, one day, guys, making 20%, small account making $150 like this, right? So it doesn't matter whether you're a big portfolio, small portfolio. Small portfolio, you make consistent returns like this, $100, $150, $80, Okay, if you got a big portfolio, you got 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars, you're going to be making more for yourself, all right? A lot more for yourself. So, again, these trades that they're doing incredibly consistent for themselves, okay, making some good returns for themselves, as you can see, all right? So, again, all these small portfolios making 5%, 10%, 14% overnight, 4% overnight, really great returns. Okay, so it's been a good week for trading for us. Despite the volatility in the markets, okay, we've done incredibly well for ourselves and the community members are replicating this very actively. Okay, so if you want to join our free community, all right, our free TWC community, our free Discord channel, then look no further, guys. Don't worry, I got you covered. Okay, sorry, guys, literally so much uh, trade results this week because the guys have done incredibly well. Okay, but anyway, for yourself if you want to join our free discord channel our free twc community you can go ahead and join the link is bit.ly slash iwc discord or you can scan the qr code over here okay and this is where i post weekly market reviews and some interesting trading resources for yourself okay so we post some interesting trading resources for yourself now on top of that okay if you want to know what are maybe some of the counters or stocks we are focusing on for the week or some interesting chart and TA analysis, then go over to our Instagram page, all right? Our Instagram page, IWC Insta, right? That's bit.ly slash IWC Insta. The QR code is here as well, okay? So guys, go and join both of these groups. I'll leave it here for the next 10 seconds. But very simply, it's bit.ly slash IWC Discord. This is where I post all our market reviews, our trade results, some interesting trading resources. And in our Instagram, all right, literally charts that we're looking out for, all right, some TA analysis that we have done, okay, and some individual stocks that our our spotlight for the week, okay, that is bit.ly slash IWC Insta, all right? Both the QR codes are there. So with that, guys, I've come to the end of our weekly market review session. I've got nothing else for you. So again, stay safe in the upcoming trading week. Take care with all the volatility and I will see you next week.